Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of April 9th. The sun has been really quiet in terms of flares, but not so much in terms of solar storms. We've had this huge filament that's been snaking around the sun, and sure enough, part of it erupted. First down at the bottom, it erupted really quickly, and it looks like it might be headed towards Earth. Then the top part of it kind of erupted. I'm not sure if it's Earth-directed or if it just kind of snaked back to the sun. Then region 2320 erupted in another display, and it is actually Earth-directed. That erupted on the 6th, and that one is definitely headed toward us, but more on that in a minute. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see we really have been hovering around the sea floor and actually a little bit below it. We haven't had a decent flare since before the end of March, and it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. The few C class flares that we've had have been the, those solar storms that we're launching, and we don't have any new active regions, so it looks like it's going to stay like this for quite some time. Switching to our solar storm conditions, we really haven't had much activity either on this front. We've been go hovering between uh, unsettled conditions to maybe active conditions every now and again, but for the most part, the solar wind has been kind of quieting down. We're coming down off of that high-speed stream, and the solar wind has just been north-south, north-south, just kind of rattling the shield just a little bit, enough to give us some beautiful aurora at high latitudes, but not much else. And this unsettled wind has brought us gorgeous aurora in very high latitude places like Norway and Finland. Also some gorgeous aurora in Alaska during the blood moon. And also in the Yukon. Switching to our prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel is density, the bottom panel is velocity. You can see that first solar storm coming out, and it looks like it indeed is going to go east of Earth, although there is some chance that there's some effects that we could be feeling from that storm. Then the second storm comes out, and you can see it kind of slams into the back of that first one and has a much better chance of hitting Earth. We're anticipating that we'll hit Earth around uh, the 9th, but we might see some wake effects from the earlier storm a little bit ahead of that, so you might start seeing stuff uh, especially in the amateur radio band, somewhere around the 8th, but the bulk of the storm should be hitting around the 9th. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2317 is now moving off of the west limb. We only have two active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and that's region 2318 and 2320. Both of them have been growing very slowly, with 2320 being the contender for any uh, large flares. But after that solar storm blew off, it really kind of stabilized its growth. It's not really doing much anymore, and so we're not anticipating any big flares from either of these regions. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities, over the coming week. We are anticipating that one-two punch from those two solar storms that are coming in. NOAA is expecting that we will have minor storm conditions at high latitudes with about a 60% chance of a major storm at high latitudes starting around the 9th. At mid-latitudes, we're anticipating only about unsettled to active conditions with about a 20% chance for a minor storm on the 9th. Now, because there are two storms coming in, one is going to pretty much miss us, but it may give us some effects starting around the 8th. So you could see your amateur radio bands be affected starting around the 8th and could clear into the 10th. And as well as aurora, we could start seeing aurora sometime around the 8th, but definitely the bulk of the storm should be hitting us around the 9th. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation outlook over the next week, NOAA is only giving us about a 10% chance of an M-class flare over the coming days, and that's probably going to continue at least over this next week, as we only have a couple uh, active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and they're pretty much stable. Same thing goes for the particle radiation storms. Everything looks normal, and we'll be in the clear. So this week looks to be pretty exciting. We have that one-two punch from those two solar storms that are en route. Now the first one looks like it probably will miss us to the east, but it does clear the way to allow that second one to hit us a little bit harder. We call that preconditioning. So you ham radio operators and you GPS operators, you might start seeing issues sometime late around the 8th and definitely into the 9th and possibly the 10th. But along with those issues come some gorgeous auroras. So you aurora photographers, make sure you have your cameras ready. Now, these storms won't be anything like the March 17th huge St. Paddy's Day storms because these are coming much more slowly and they won't have nearly the impact. But it should still be a really good show. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.